We began this year with much uncertainty and many challenges. However, we remain resilient and working together, we accomplished much more than we thought possible. At the start of the year, it comes your way late. It's really literally moving from the 20th century to the 21st century. Travel isn't just about the destination, there's a real joy in the journey, and I think this space is going to really contribute to that. The fact is that, you know, as the airport continues to grow and we see more traffic, we're looking for new ways to leverage technology. I couldn't be any more thrilled to finally have this underway. We're going to be able to vaccinate our frontline workers, those with the most contact with the public, and those that are most vulnerable. Today signals the return of robust air travel and better days ahead. As the proud son of immigrants, I know through the experience of my own parents what it's like to arrive in a new country. Seattle-Tacoma International Airport will inevitably be the first impression for arriving refugees, as it was for my parents when they immigrated through SCA now over 30 years ago. The big message I want to leave with everyone is after all the work, we are ready here at the port. We're so happy to be back. We're happy to be here as part of the positive economic impact, both to the state of Washington and to the state of Alaska. We're saving emissions, we're saving using oil. Over the lifetime of this dock and the power here, we're going to save a lot of money and in doing so, help the environment. Well, it's incredibly important that we uh, demonstrate leadership in the efforts to improve ocean health. We want to bring the community in and have them help us maintain the site. These are the ancestral lands and waters of the Coast Salish people with whom we share a commitment to steward these natural resources for future generations. So our youth are incredibly hardworking. They're so positive. I absolutely love working with young people. We are so happy that the port have allowed this land to be used repeatedly. There needs to be, I think, a, a number of conversations, but then those conversations need to have tangible results and tangible outcomes. When you invest in people in the community, that pays off, right? This workforce that came around to do these projects just didn't materialize out of nowhere. The port for years has been investing in apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. If I go do laborers, I could eventually go open my own business with my, fa with my father and my brother. So this uh, Dora Satellite Modernization Project is uh, really a testament to the cultural and natural richness of the Great Northwest. This is one of the most successful projects in the history of the port. I think this work is really beneficial for young people because your energy is spent doing something really worthwhile. Our work benefits the community and um, it's just a really cool opportunity to bring the community to the river. So the port is a great partner because they, they get it. It's a huge sense of civic pride and pride for the workers. The recovery is well underway. We have a great team and great partners. Together we can build a much brighter future. Good morning, I'm, I'm Steve Metrick, Executive Director of the Port of Seattle. Thank you for joining us as we present the state of your port. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in the traditional land of the first people of this region, the Coast Salish peoples, past and present. We honor with gratitude the land itself and this heritage. We are grateful to respectfully live and work as guests on these lands with the Coast Salish and native people who call this land home. Today, for a second year, we are doing this as a virtual event, but we look forward to the future when we will be again able to gather in person. Joining me today is Commission President Fred Fellman. Later in the program, Port of Seattle Commissioners Stephanie Bowman, Ryan Calkins, Sam Cho, and Peter Steinbrook will join us virtually. 
Throughout our presentation today, you'll see how the Port of Seattle worked throughout 2021 to connect our region to recovery. It is now my honor to introduce Commission President Fred Fellman. Commissioner. Thank you, Steve. I'm excited to join you for today's presentation of the 2021 State of the Port today. On behalf of the Commission, we're proud to celebrate this year's accomplishments with our business, labor, and community partners. We're grateful for your leadership, Steve, because integrity, humility, and commitment to public service has served to unify the port around a common mission to help lead recovery and address some of the region's underlying economic inequities that have only been compounded by the pandemic. Leadership makes all the difference during such challenging times. Thanks very much. Thank you, Commissioner Fellman. I'd like to thank you personally for your efforts as president this year, enable us to, enabling us to get a lot accomplished despite the many obstacles that we faced. I would like to give the bottom line up front, and so I'm pleased to report that the state of the port is strong and on solid footing as we finish 2021 and head into 2022. Looking back, we can confidently say this year we made progress in restoring our operations and leading the region to recovery. Throughout the year, we continued to face challenges related to the pandemic, but we were resilient. We adjusted, we adapted, innovated, and moved forward. Last year, we shared the principles to help lead an equitable and sustainable recovery. And these same principles served us well throughout 2021. They are put health and safety first, maintain the operation of our aviation and maritime gateways, continue our vital investments in capital programs, and continue to keep the community and sustainability interwoven in all of our work and programs. We owe our success to many of you who are with us here today, and with a special thanks going out to all frontline workers at the port and in the port-related businesses. They are truly where the rubber hits the road, and we thank you. You embraced our efforts to keep our facilities safe and healthy for our employees, business partners, and the community. The battle against the pandemic is a multi-pronged effort, which depends on using the best science in partnership with health agencies and our business partners to implement effective policies and practices. When vaccines became available, we stepped up, we, we stepped up to open a vaccine clinic at the airport in partnership with Albertsons and Safeway and delivered almost 9,000 shots to airport workers and port employees. The virus remains persistent and we remain vigilant, keeping up our efforts to reduce its spread across our operations and facilities. The growing recovery of Seattle Tacoma International Airport is a testament to the success of our health and safety efforts. In 2021, through the great work of Aviation Managing Director Lance Little and his team, SEA has gained back 74% of its pre-pandemic passenger volume. Domestic travel has been the quickest to recover, but we are hopeful about the pent-up demand for international travel. We are encouraged that three international airlines, ANA, Singapore, and Air France, have recently restarted service, and we are excited about new service from Finnair to Helsinki. Investments in capital projects are investments in the future, and we are on target to complete nearly $500 million in capital work across about 165 projects this year. A big highlight, this summer we completed major construction at the airport's end concourse, making our airport more efficient, comfortable, and further expanding job and business opportunities. Today, I'm pleased to announce that major construction at the airport's new International Rivals facility is complete. We are now working with federal agencies and airline partners on readiness testing. This is the largest and most complex capital project yet for the port. We expect the state-of-the-art gateway to begin greeting international passengers with a modern welcome in the first quarter of 2022. This is a strong position as we head into next year. We also hit major milestones in our maritime division this year. Our maritime industries thrive throughout the year, preserving jobs and generating economic activity in commercial fishing, grain export, and recreational boating. Managing Director of Maritime Stephanie Jones Stebbins and her team continually looked for ways to improve operations and support customer needs, including helping the North Pacific Fishing Fleet comply with pandemic related health and safety measures. Perhaps the greatest challenge for Maritime this year was how to safely restore Alaska cruising from Seattle. Things did not look promising early in the year, but with timely guidance from the CDC and strong leadership from our congressional delegation, the way to restore cruise became clear. An all-hands-on-deck effort 
by public health officials, cruise lines, and our port staff resulted in the operational agreements necessary to meet the CDC framework, and cruises resumed from Seattle. Cruise supports thousands of jobs on the waterfront and throughout Seattle and the region. Even with a limited season, we are able to host approximately 25% of the passenger volume that typically generates $900 million in economic activity for local business. One of our strategies for restoring crews was to work closely with ports and partners in Alaska that share the same customers and priorities for health and safety. We're now looking to expand that partnership to address more of our cruise priorities, such as economic development and sustainability. Looking ahead to next season, we anticipate being back to 75% of typical cruise passenger volume. Our Economic Development Division, led by Managing Director Dave McFadden, also played a major role in helping lead an equitable recovery. This year, we advanced plans to redevelop a state-of-the-art logistics center at Terminal 106 along East Marginal Way. Once completed, the strategically located facility will serve e-commerce, manufacturers, and logistics providers that support maritime industries. Throughout the pandemic, we maintain our emphasis on creating opportunity in all communities. We spent more than $43 million with 285 women and minority-owned firms and are stepping up our efforts to do more. This year, we also reached major milestones in our strategy to be the greenest, most energy-efficient port in North America. The port worked to accelerate our sustainability goals and our environmental and sustainability staff, led by Senior Director Sandy Kilroy, is developing the programs that reduce the port's impact on our environment. We published our annual greenhouse gas emissions report, which showed how the airport's use of renewable natural gas is already cutting greenhouse gas emissions significantly. Recently, the Commission approved the Maritime Division's plan for Seattle to become a zero carbon port by 2040 and for the port industries to decarbonize by 2050. We also kept our focus on equity through our Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, led by Senior Director Bukta Gesar. The Commission-led Civil Rights and Police Assessment Task Force released a report with sound recommendations that are now serving as a blueprint for action. Recognizing that the jobs crisis for young people did not end in 2020, we renewed our efforts by continuing the Opportunity Youth Initiative to employ young people in a wide range of community improvement projects. This year, we ramped up our South King County Community Impact Fund. Last month, the Commission committed $4 million for economic recovery and environmental project grants. This is a lot of progress and work. With that effort comes stress, and I certainly recognize the last two years have put a lot of pressure on our organization and our staff. Our emphasis on weathering the two-year COVID storm meant that we approached our own budget with a great deal of restraint, including deep cuts in discretionary spending. While those steps were necessary, I know they put a strain on our organization. Therefore, one of my priorities for 2022 is to invest more resources into the port's biggest asset, our people. By investing our employees, we'll decrease strain across the organization and increase our capacity and capability to deliver our vital services and programs. Last month, the Commission adopted our 2022 budget and five-year capital plan. Our plans put the port on track to spend more on capital projects than ever before in our history. Over the next five years, we will invest up to $4.4 billion in aviation and maritime facilities. Even as we complete landmark projects like the North Satellite and the International Rivals Facility, we're opening up new chapters in our capital plan with an eye towards the future. We're kicking off airport improvements across the main terminal and into sea concourse that will transform those facilities. And all along our waterfront, we have projects to preserve our critical infrastructure, increase the, their efficiency, restore habitat, and phase out our reliance on fossil fuels. These are ambitious plans, and we need the people and partners who can help make this vision a reality. While there remains some uncertainty about how 2022 will unfold, I'm confident that we have the right team and partners to navigate whatever lies in the year ahead. Thank you for all your contributions, dedication, support, and resolve as we continue to work together on an equitable recovery. All of the accomplishments and work ahead I have described today were made possible because of the visionary leadership of our Port of Seattle Commission. The commissioners have all worked tirelessly for the community and the environment, and I am so proud to have worked closely with them throughout the last two years of challenges and obstacles with the pandemic. 
As we come to the close of 2021, I'd like to thank each of the commissioners for their trust, support, and partnership over the last year. At this time, we'll now hear from each of the commissioners. Good morning. I'm Port of Seattle Commissioner Stephanie Bowman. Thank you so much for attending our 2021 State of the Port event. I'm honored to be here with you today, and I'm grateful that you've taken the time to learn more about the industry that I care so deeply about. There are two fundamental elements that every port, no matter where in the world it's located, share. Ports are future-oriented, and they are connectors. Since the beginning of industry and trade, those who manage the ports have been responsible for looking to the horizon, anticipating what's coming, and laying the groundwork for those arrivals, first by water and then by air. The world's oldest port in Byblos, Lebanon, is believed to be 5,000 years old. In 3000 BC, it was used by the Phoenicians to ship their wine, and it exported timber throughout the Mediterranean for use in tomb construction and shipbuilding. Except for the tomb construction, that could describe the ports of Washington State. As a port commissioner, I've always tried to think forward, to anticipate how to use the resources of the Port of Seattle to build our industries that allow our communities and our people to flourish. While I'm proud of so many accomplishments in my years of service as a commissioner, one that stands out as quintessential to the future of the ports, being forward-looking and connectors, is a program that I initiated in the early months of the pandemic in 2020, the Opportunity Youth Initiative. The goal of the Opportunity Youth Initiative is to connect economically disadvantaged youth with career opportunities in port industries, maritime, aviation, construction, and green jobs that desperately need the workforce of the future. Focus specifically on those furthest from opportunity, youth of color, those with a high school degree or less, and low income youth, and working in partnership with Seattle Goodwill, the Seattle Parks Foundation, Partners in Employment, and the Urban League of Metropolitan Seattle. 196 of our region's young people were employed because of the port in the summer and fall of 2020. The program's success speaks for itself. In 2021, we increased our investment, and the City of Seattle has joined us as a partner with the goal of training as many as 300 youth in these critical industries. Combined with our high school internship program, which I was proud to champion the expansion of five years ago, the Port of Seattle has provided 900 young people with their first step towards a career that will help them and help our region's core industries thrive. That's a legacy that I'm profoundly grateful to leave behind. But just as importantly, that's exactly the forward thinking, connecting work that Port should do. Thanks again for your time this morning, and I hope you enjoy learning a little more about the Port's work from those most impacted, the youth we serve. I am somebody. We give them a sense of belonging, a sense of being wanted, a sense of um, security. I was once that child, you know what I mean, once that person, you know what I mean, who didn't have that person, you know what I mean, to pat you on your back saying good job. Mr. Lewis, you know, he's like a, he's like a big brother figure to me, or like, kind of like an uncle, because you know, even when I'm wrong, he'll try and correct me, or I need a little bit of guidance because I'm struggling somewhere, and he'll help me with that. They always listen to me, and it's super cool that they listen and are there for me. Just, just know that, you know, we make a difference. Yeah. Just the opportunity that was, was not afforded to me. These streamlined programs into a career were on the round when I was coming up. So to come from the life that I came from and to be able to come back to my community after so much, and I'm not even ashamed to say after 20 years of incarceration, you know, for mistakes that I made when I was younger, um, and be able to come back to the same communities that I terrorized or helped tear down, and now I get to help build them up. So I understand that it starts with the youth. It starts with the youth. You can't give up on them. I've never been the type of person to like sit behind a desk like I I mean I don't know if you guys can tell but I got ADHD like even in there I just got a whole bunch of energy so I mean it's good to take that energy and use it in a 
productive and destructive way because in construction you also do demolition so and I mean my mom's always told me I'm good at breaking things so this is definitely a good career not not just a job like yeah you make good money and that's cool or whatever but you could go anywhere in the United States or really anywhere in the world and there's always going to be construction work for the last 11 weeks I've been learning how to use my tape measure and then on top of that I've been learning how to use my speed square leveler and learning all the parts about framing and how to like install doors and windows and stuff like that. We built a tiny house and we built a couple of trusses for the roof and then we built foundation and did the floor, walls and insulation. I learned a lot more than I thought I would learn because I learned math actually. I don't like math but I learned math so that was also really cool. It helps young people, not just minorities, get into construction fields which are hard to get into my future dreams. Uh, I also plan on building my own house with my, with my dad and brother. I want to be a laborer first off because they do everything. You know, they, they do, they help with plumbers, they help with electricians, they help all that. So I figure if I learn how to do like small parts of each and every trade, I can apply that to what I need to build my house or like what I need in order to do maintenance to it. I could eventually go open my own business with my father and my brother. Good morning, I'm Port of Seattle Commissioner Ryan Calkins. At the Port, we recognize that our driving purpose is to create prosperity for our region in a sustainable and equitable way. In other words, how do we create economic opportunity that supports healthy families, business innovation, and a better future for our children and grandchildren? Over the course of the last few years, the global challenges of climate change, a pandemic, and economic turmoil have drawn our attention away from our own region. But when we return our focus to home, we can find remarkable stories of success that build shared prosperity for our generation and generations to come. Today, I wanna to share with you a couple of videos about projects that exemplify the local work that will have global impact. The first video highlights participants in our Maritime Business Accelerator. What you'll see is that these business leaders don't necessarily fit the traditional mold. In fact, they represent a new generation of female leaders innovating across a range of maritime industries. You know, I don't look like what someone's mental image of a boat captain looks like. I think that I really have kind of figured out what I'm good at. The experience is invaluable and can lead to somewhere that you never thought you would go. I love working on issues that I care about. I think that that's essential. That's how you're going to get to new levels from new plateaus. I think it's it's been pretty valuable to see other badass ladies out there <laughs> doing cool stuff, you know, and it's, it's cool to, to see that and be like, oh, well, if she can do it, I can do it, right? First off, maritime is a pretty male-dominated industry, so that is definitely a trend that is present and recognizable in that industry. And in some cases, I think it was a little more difficult for me, but I also, I've also had some pretty good experiences. I feel like one of the things I've really learned is to seek out other women mentors in that space. If somebody had told me that starting a company meant that you would basically you take all the best people you've ever worked with and just work with them. I probably would have started this at least a year earlier than I did because it's been the coolest adventure. One of the things we've done at the company is we've hired junior people who don't necessarily have the background that you would look for for their roles, but are passionate. And we've grown them internally and they are fantastic. I have loved hearing the different perspectives. It, it's really refreshing to work with a group of people that aren't necessarily in your industry. And it's been, it's been pretty exciting moving into the entrepreneurial space. There's a lot of women starting businesses. It's exciting. <laughs> As you can see, their projects could help us to address some of the toughest challenges in maritime, from the consequences of climate change 
to feeding a growing population, and more. The second video I wanna share comes from Maritime High School, a collaboration between the Port, Highline Schools, the Northwest Maritime Center, and the Duwamish River Community Coalition. As our students near the end of their first semester at Maritime, you'll see what a remarkable experience a truly maritime education is. What excites me about the high school is that there's a whole generation of people that are gonna finally have easy access to all the amazing jobs in the maritime industry. You know, Northwest Maritime Center has a saying that the sea is the most powerful teacher that we know. And so project-based learning for me is really grounded in that idea that we want our students to own their learning. I am all about hands-on, hearts-on, and minds-on education. I believe that we learn by doing. And so that experience where kids can actually get out into the field, where they're going to the Port of Seattle, where they're going to Northwest Maritime Center, where they're actually getting their hands on things and building and constructing things, that's where the real learning actually happens to me. If the, the young people that are part of these programs will get a chance to see the bounds of their opportunities are limitless. And, and I tell you, we will be able to cultivate so much new talent right here at home helping underrepresented neighborhoods like South Park, like Georgetown, having young people from those neighborhoods that are less supported and typically have less generational wealth to start getting some of these jobs, then they'll bring that wealth back into their neighborhoods. How the Maritime High School is focusing on BIPOC communities, I think that's really special um, to see these youth getting this knowledge coming into the space and then shaping the space. Because as we know, like the maritime industry is looking for bodies and they're also trying to cater to a new audience. I believe this high school is just gonna be a multiplier for the maritime industry. Uh, we have so many industry leaders around this area that can offer their history, their expertise to help our students you know, get more familiar with what the industry does. Yeah, I'm really excited for them because the curriculum is not just about learning the science, but it's really about engaging in community and learning about environmental justice, being equitable, challenging the process even. And I think that's what the maritime industry really needs and the world needs. I chose Maritime High School because I wanted something different in my education. This school is giving me and my classmates a unique opportunity to learn in different ways. I chose this school because I really love marine biology and I also heard it was hands-on learning which can be really helpful for me because I remember things better when I actually do them. So rather than sitting down in a classroom and just like reading about boats, we're able to go out into the field and get that experience for it. At Maritime, you get lots and lots of field work. You get to go outside, you get to enjoy some fresh air, and you get to just meet new people and have new experiences that at other schools you just wouldn't have. Something like a community learning showcase where they're not only able to demonstrate that learning, but they're able to share that with their community. And the community learns and hears about what's happening, and there becomes that, that generation of interest and momentum and change. Probably somebody that's gonna change the world is gonna come out of that Maritime High School because they're gonna think of a clever idea and it's gonna help out future generations. When students start to realize that they are active participants in their own learning, um, that really can be transformational. But I think right now what we have is a program that will inspire the, uh, the young people of our future. No matter what your path is, whether you like science or recreational boats or working with your hands and building boats or repairing boats or working on boats, there's a place for you. Good morning. I'm Port of Seattle Commissioner Sam Cho. COVID-19 has been a black light on our society. It has exposed many of the underlying truths of inequity in our world and presented us with a moment of reckoning. As this pandemic continues to disrupt, we are laser focused on how as a port, we can contribute to an equitable recovery. We know that spending on improving the port's infrastructure leads to good living wage jobs. 
And that is why we have budgeted $560 million towards capital improvements in the year 2022 alone, and a five-year capital improvement program with a total spend of $4.4 billion through 2026. This, coupled with funding from the federal infrastructure bill, will lead to a jumpstart in our region's recovery. But that is not enough. So in order to inform our decisions on the remainder of our 2022 budget, we turn to the community for ideas and feedback on how we can uniquely contribute to the recovery. Over a period of three months, we conducted a listening tour, holding a dozen meetings with over 100 stakeholders, community, and industry leaders. And we heard you loud and clear. As a result of these listening sessions, the Port of Seattle is re-upping our commitment to workforce development, to providing opportunity to the youth, expanding the eligibility for economic development grants to our neighboring cities, and funding new and expanded initiatives like combating human and labor trafficking. While these listening sessions led to many long-term aspirations for the port, it also highlighted many short-term and immediate needs as well. For instance, one of our listening sessions highlighted the need for further assistance to our women and minority-owned small businesses operating at the airport. These businesses were hit extra hard by the pandemic as most brick and mortar businesses were able to pivot to delivery while our tenants at the airport did not have that option. This next video highlights one such woman minority business owner, Danielle An, and her small business, Chalo. Danielle's story of the pandemic not only highlights the tremendous resilience of our small business owners, but also the great partnership we have with them. I'm Danielle An. I'm the owner of Chalo & Co. What I love most is the potential to make a difference in the world. So under Chalo, you can really find a wide range of merchandise that caters to different market segments, uh, from children's uh, wear, t-shirts, to bags and pouches for ladies. We try to cater to an entire family, really. When COVID came, it just put us into a complete stop. You know, the business dropped at first by nearly 90%. And I really thought, this is a real test. Are we gonna make it? But through help of Port of Seattle, their support, and having the store really helped us to turn it around because we had some income. And it took months to get back to even 50% to where we were. But that was better than if you had zero. The SeaTech International Airport kiosk program, entering that really changed our business. The SEA kiosk program is a specialty program that we came up with specific to providing opportunity to micro businesses and small businesses throughout our community. It really focuses on WIMBY businesses, which are women and minority businesses. She actually got certified as an airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise. And that is something that's really important to us as part of what we do here. And that's an FAA regulated program. And it's really important to us that we continue to move forward with getting tenants certified. And she worked through a tireless effort to get herself certified. And it, is, um, it just continues to help grow and further what we do as far as um, providing opportunity to women and minority businesses. They were very patient. They worked with us. They deferred some of our payments. Uh, they gave us a little amount to defer some of our rents. But more than that, I think just having psychological support and not pushing us to say, hey, the rent is due, you know, that was really helpful. I think Port of Seattle was just really an angel <laughs> during this time. Good morning, I'm Port of Seattle Commissioner Peter Steinbrook. The port is a different place today than it was a decade ago, or even just five years ago. Something I find so powerful about this organization is that no matter how much our industries and communities change, its core mission endures. 
The other thing I find so powerful about this organization is that we do not wait to act. No other port in North America, and truly maybe the world, leads with grassroots initiative and vision like the Port of Seattle. For example, our South King County Community Impact Fund, a $10 million voluntary port program, is already changing lives for communities closest to the port with community-led economic development and environmental projects. This was a port-built concept inspired by the needs of our community shared with us. Another example is where the port took the initiative was our civil rights task force and police assessment. This was a necessary beginning step to bring transparency and light to changes we need to make around public safety, racial equity, and justice in our community. Now we have the momentum and the roadmap for change. Finally, a place where I think the port is far ahead of its peers is in our focus on resiliency and response to climate change. We looked at changing climate and started charting our own path. The evidence of why we need to act is all around us. Watching the port of Vancouver lose its connections to freight networks should be a terrifying wake-up call that the time to prepare is now. This is a moral imperative, a health issue, and a competitiveness issue. We are not new to this fight, but it's time we get into a higher gear. I'm optimistic that we can meet the need for transformational change because of the partners at our side. Our community is determined to help us make the change to a carbon-free future. Our industry partners are with us as well, sharing our vision for a zero-carbon future and planning their own transformations away from fossil fuels. Earlier this year, the port spent about a half million dollars to upgrade the electrical at Harbor Island Marina Dock. We made the change for safety and to meet the increased power needs of our commercial and industrial customers. It's a small project that contributes to a larger transformational strategy to decarbonize our industry. And it's just one example of why I'm confident in our future and proud of our local industries for helping lead the way. Our first priority is you know, to provide our customers with everything they need and to maintain those long lasting relationships. It's also our responsibility to be stewards for the environment and make good choices for our neighbors. My name is Russell Shrewsbury. I'm the Vice President of Western Towboat here in Seattle. Uh, our company is a family-owned business started in 1948 in Ballard. Today we've been at Harbor Island with our boats moored for over 30 years now. We're crewed up all the time with our tugs and we want to be sensitive to the environment and the people here at Harbor Island and Puget Sound. It's, being it's commercial and we have four or five people on the boat, we needed just a little bit more power than what was offered. Western Towboat was very innovative in developing, you know, their kind of a portable isolation transformer system and uh, it enabled us to implement the shore power. Yeah, the way it's set up here is uh, all of our boats run a similar cord, so we can run any of our tugs here at Harbor Island that are tied up on shore power. So shore power has really been integral in our operation with not just the fact of the emissions reduction and everything else, but we get the fuel savings and the vessel crews are able to sleep better. And the big change is really the maintenance and not having to put individuals in those hazardous scenarios. Really a net benefit on a lot more fronts than just the emissions for us. Crowley plans on being the safest and most efficient and the lowest emitting company going forward. And really shore power is integral with that. And it's not just in this near harbor environment, it will be branching out into other operations and everything else. Well, industry is working in the environment, so you're obligated to protect it. Our job is to make the least amount of footprint in the area we work. And by doing little projects and big projects like this, you're helping lessen that footprint. And that's what's important to us.
Good morning. I'm Fred Fellerman, Port of Seattle Commission President and co-chair of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Last year, aware of great uncertainty before us, we laid out our strategy. Create broad-based economic opportunities by building, maintaining, and operating our gateways to sustain our region's economic base and create the jobs of the future. As Executive Metric previously mentioned, we did this by keeping the health and safety central to everything we do. Continuing to invest in capital projects, which are second largest driver of economic activity and jobs at the port, and by expanding our commitments to sustainability and equity, making them not just programs, but integral parts of all port operations. From kelp to killer whales and construction, we're also working to assure interactions within the port and engagement with the communities are culturally appropriate. These are our values, but they also support new opportunities and innovation. This was not just our vision, which we're committed to carrying on into the future, it's a strategy and commitment shared by all of our partners who kept working through the pandemic in difficult conditions to keep our gateways safely operating and to keep construction workers and related businesses on the job. This was a partnership and we're grateful to you. We also close out and look beyond the horizon. We see many positive signs for the years ahead. We also remain clear eyed about the challenges. Operating and building, which support does very well, will only get us part way to our mission. To fully realize our mission, we need to focus on how we operate and how we build. We've already made extraordinary strides due in large part to executive metrics creation of a unified port vision through the integration of commission priorities as Steve's previous remarks and videos demonstrated. Together, the port's unified vision embraced transformations in our region and globe, such as climate change. Some examples include our advocacy in the past three years that helped the state of Washington adopt the low carbon fuel standard this year. Its passage was a major accomplishment that will accelerate industry progress towards adopting the use of cleaner fuels, reducing climate impacts, and creating new career opportunities. We used our influence to create clear market signals by adopting new goals to phase out our port's own emissions in the next 18 years and support industry decarbonization goals by 2050. We made major investments in renewable natural gas and set ambitious goals to use sustainable aviation fuels at the airport. And now we have studies underway with the city light and increased electrification of maritime operations and examine the feasibility of bringing clean hydrogen power to the waterfront. We're also working with King County to study the feasibility of converting municipal solid waste into fuel, an, an initiative that would not only support the use of renewable fuels, but also help King County reduce demand for more landfill space. And we've even installed solar arrays on our new bathrooms at Chilchul Marina, adding to those we previously installed at Fisherman's Terminal and on the roof of Port Headquarters at Pier 69. But perhaps the most important partnerships we formed is with that of the Port of Tacoma, when six years ago we created a unique collaboration known as the Northwest Seaport Alliance. The opening of the fully modernized Terminal 5 in January demonstrates the benefits associated with the decision by these former competitors to share the expenses and revenues of building and maintaining marine cargo terminals in both harbors. Innovation and collaboration are key to meeting our region's needs to build a green economy. Serving on the advisory board of Maritime Blue, I'm, I'm encouraged by the progress that's being made to decarbonize the maritime industry by tapping into the expertise and entrepreneurial capacity, which is integral to our region's DNA. However, such transitions will require significant investments. The recent passage of President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law comes at a critical time. The port is already poised to make some of the largest infrastructure investments in a generation. We passed a $559 million capital budget and a $4.4 billion five-year capital improvement plan. And now we have the federal government as a major partner to help the port be more efficient, sustainable, and equitable. This historic investment in infrastructure came just as we launched our work on the West Seattle Bridge Repair. A critical link to our marine terminals, which we've already committed $11 million towards, as part of our partnership with the city to enable commerce and commuters to coexist and to help assure that construction is completed promptly. This is a pivotal moment 
a time of deep transformation. For an organization, though, that's been around 110 years, transformation is nothing new. As exemplified by our neighboring tribal leaders with whom we share a special relationship, we do what we do for future generations. We continue to adapt to challenging times more connected to the people we serve who work and live here. After years of commitment, hard work, and partnerships, we're excited to open the new International Arrivals Facility, or IF, as well as the Duwamish River People's Park in 2022. And just as the public has become broadly aware of port congestion, we're on the cusp of opening the modernized Terminal 5, the most significant new container terminal capacity to come online along the West Coast. So there'll be much achievements to celebrate as we look into the next years and phases of the port's future. However, we also stay focused on filling our mission together. I particularly want to recognize the efforts of two of my colleagues, Commissioners Stephanie Bowman and Peter Steinbrook, with whom I've had the honor and pleasure of working to advance the mission of the port on behalf of the residents of King County. While their tenure at the port will come to a close this year, their contributions will continue to help improve the port's ability to advance our community's job opportunities and quality of life. Commissioner Steinbrook came to the port with a family history and personal dedication to community service. He served, he served that lineage by serving 10 years on the Seattle City Council before his term at the port. His expertise in land use planning and environmental stewardship advanced the port's ability to protect the working waterfront while helping to assure the needs of neighboring communities and the environment are fully integrated into the port's operations. He leaves a legacy of leadership and many substantive contributions to the port, and I'm sure he'll continue to serve this region and the greater good following his time at the port. I've also had the great opportunity to work with Commissioner Stephanie Bowman. During the past six years, I've had the honor to serve on the commission. Throughout this time, I've relied on her support and extensive expertise in the port industry. Her commitment to the port and its advanced broad constituency has been unparalleled on the commission. We all owe her a debt of gratitude for her leadership in bridging the cultural and economic gaps between the ports of Seattle and Tacoma to create the Northwest Seaport Alliance, a unique collaboration between ports found nowhere else in the world. We can be assured that Commissioner Bowman will find other routes in which to continue her passion for trade, equity, and the environment following her two terms on the commission. I look forward to continuing our collaboration with both these community leaders in their future endeavors. I also want to welcome our two soon-to-be commissioners, Toshiko Hasegawa and Hamdi Mohammed, who both have strong backgrounds in public service. In 2018, Commissioner-elect Hasegawa was appointed by Governor Inslee as Executive Director of the Washington State Commission on Asian Pacific American Affairs, a statewide government agency dedicated to improving the lives of Asian and Pacific Island community members, the second largest and fastest growing minority population in Washington State. Commissioner-elect Mohammed will be joining the port after serving in the King County Executive's Office, where she implemented internal and external immigration policies including training development for over 15,000 county employees. She previously served as district uh, manager for Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. We all look forward to working with both of them as they bring their unique background and expertise to make significant contributions to the port. I'd also like to recognize Commissioners Calkins and Cho for their continued hard work and commitment to the port. Their enthusiasm, experience, and perspectives has enabled the port to expand its goals while advancing its mission. The first quarter of next year will start off easy with the long awaited completion of the IAF and T5. While there will be inevitably unexpected challenges to face in the future, such as new strains of the coronavirus, I expect the review of the sustainable airport master plan and resolution of competing interests involving the future of T46 to be the top priorities we'll need to address in 2022. Thanks for all joining us here this morning for the 2021 State of the Port presentation and for giving us an opportunity to provide you with a preview of what we're planning for 2022. However, the Port of Seattle is involved with a lot more than we could describe today. So if you want to learn more, the Port's plan, search our website for 2022 Budget and Brief, which provides a great summary of the past year's activities and what we hope to accomplish in the future. 
But we know we can't achieve these goals without your engagement and support. So I'm going to close this presentation with a video thanking all of you who made this year's success possible and which gives us optimism that we can continue to create great things together in 2022. So thank you and have a safe and healthy holiday season. Best to you all. Thank you.